Okay, we are going to pack a whole lot into this video. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to start in DaVinci Resolve in the Fusion page where we are going to create our stream transition. Then we are going to talk about exporting and conversion to get that transition into the best format for your screen. And then we are going to hop into OBS and walk through setting up our transition so that you can actually use it on your stream. And then I'm going to show you the preset that I have created with the exact transition that we will make in this video and show you how to use and customize that preset to create your own custom stream stream transition in a matter of minutes without you ever having to even open the Fusion page. Let's go. We're going to start here in DaVinci Resolve in the edit page. What you want to do is in your effects library, go to effects and drag Fusion Composition right onto your timeline. By default, this Fusion Composition effect will be five seconds long, which I think is way too long for a simple stream transition. So what we're going to do is go to about one and a half seconds and trim that clip back. And then we can simply mouse over that fusion composition and click the fusion icon down here to open the fusion page. And in your node graph, the only thing you will see will be a single media out node. Now our transition will be made out of five colored bars. So to start to build those bars, we need to create five of these background nodes. So if your media out is selected, you want to deselect that, make sure you're just in a blank space. And then you can click this background node. And then if that background node stays selected and you click the background node again, it will add a second node and automatically create a merge to bring them into the same tree. But we want five of these background nodes. So with that second merge selected, we can click background again, another and then again, one, and then again, one, one. and it will create five different background nodes with the merge nodes required to bring them into a single composition. And then you can take the output of that final merge node to your media out. And all you will see is a black rectangle. These backgrounds can be any color, but just to demonstrate, I am going to change all of their colors so that they are dispersed over a simple color gradient from dark to light. So I know you don't see it, but right now there are five full screen color backgrounds layered on top of each other. And if I were to go to this final background and add a mask, click this rectangle and it adds a rectangled mask, you will see that it masks that that shape of that background to wherever we have this rectangle. So to create this effect we're going for, you could create custom masks for each of these layers and animate them independently across the screen. But instead, what we're gonna do is really leverage the power of nodes inside Fusion to make that all much simpler. So without any of these background nodes selected, I'm going to click that same rectangle mask button. I'm gonna stretch it out and then I'm going to rotate it to this diagonal angle. And right now it's not affecting these backgrounds at all. You can tell it's not cutting out those backgrounds and you can see in my node tree, it's not even connected to any of these backgrounds. But what we're gonna do is connect this mask to every single one of these background nodes. So right now this single rectangle mask is affecting all of our background nodes at once. So let's add the animation we want to this mask. I'm gonna go back to the beginning of our timeline and if our rectangle mask is selected over in the inspector, I'm going to click this diamond to set a keyframe and I'm going to drag it over changing that X coordinate to just off screen. And then we're gonna to move to the end of our timeline leaving a little bit of a cushion and drag that rectangle mask all the way till it is off screen on the other side. And because we had already enabled keyframes when we changed our position on the timeline and shifted that position value, it automatically set another keyframe so that if we scrub over our timeline, that rectangle mask shifts from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. And although you still can't see it, that is moving all of those backgrounds behind it. We could have duplicated this mask five times and had five different rectangles for each of these background layers. But if we added the same animation to all those masks, we would have a lot of keyframes to keep track of. And if we wanted to change them after the fact, that would be a lot more work. It's hard. So instead, what we're gonna do is use this single rectangle mask with one set of keyframes and animations and instead use the time speed node to delay the effect of that mask on subsequent background layers. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna click shift space to open the select tool prompt, type in time and click on time speed and add. Now I'm going to drag that node, hold shift and add it to my second background layer. Then if I have that time speed selected in the inspector, you will see controls for that node and you will see a delay parameter. And if we start to increase this value, you'll see that background layer being affected by that mask 
will start to poke out from all the other background nodes. And that's because the animation of this rectangle moving across the screen is still happening, but the animation is being delayed by this time speed node. So to try this out, I'm going to select that node, control C to copy, control V to paste. I will just paste that in the open and drag that to the next subsequent background node. But I will have to increase that delay because I now want it to be delayed behind that previous delay. So I will have to add six each time to this delay parameter to keep that delay uniform. So I'm going to go to 12, 18, and go to 24. And now if I go to the beginning of my timeline, you will see these background nodes move across the screen using that same rectangle animation, but that animation is delayed so they fan out in this pattern, revealing all five different backgrounds. So you have a single animation driving all of these background layers, but that animation is pretty boring because this animation is what we call linear. We have two keyframes and the movement between those keyframes is constant over time. And with just a few tweaks, we can make this animation look way better. I'm going to select my rectangle mask that is affecting all of these different background nodes and open the spline viewer. Any parameter that you add a keyframe to will show up in this spline toolbox, but because this is the only keyframe we have, it's the only one we see. And if we check that displacement box in this spline graph next to it, you will see a visual representation of that movement that we keyframed. So here where this little lock is, that is our first keyframe. And if we scrub our timeline, you will see that as those backgrounds slide across the screen, that movement is reflected in this graph. And then when we reach the end of our graph where the movement stops, you have to remember because of these time speed nodes, that movement is being delayed. So it takes a little while longer for that movement to finish for all the backgrounds that, that follow. So now it is time to dip into the secret sauce of animation, and that is easing. I'm gonna drag a box around both of these keyframes in our spline tool, and you will see little handles attached to each of them. And I can drag those handles, and you will see that that will affect the motion we see in the viewer. So if you think about this visual representation of moving between two values in a straight line, if we drag this first handle down, you'll see it takes longer for that motion to get really get into a full swing. That's the general principle, but here is what I recommend for amazing looking motion. First, I'm going to click F to flatten these curves. This is really similar to what you would see in something like After Effects with the Easy Ease option. But if we have those keyframes selected and we click T, this opens up precise controls for that easing. Here is my favorite combination for these ease values. I'll tell you a secret. For movement like this, just across the screen, I like to go to my first keyframe and change that ease out to 70. And then I like to go to that second keyframe and change that ease in to 50. And if we play that back, you see that you get a pretty natural sort of speed up and whip across the screen. Obviously as is, this can't function as a stream transition. We are going to use the stinger effect in OBS and for that to be successful, we need at least one frame where the screen is completely covered so the transition can happen behind that. On the rectangle mask, we have the actual size of this mask. If I change the width of these bars, they will affect all of these background layers. So keeping that time speed delay at six and just changing the width of the mask on that rectangle, I was able to create this transition, which will give us more than enough time to transition scenes inside OBS. But the last thing that could really make this transition look great is motion blur. So we are going to select that single rectangle node that is driving all of this animation, look in the inspector and go down here to settings where you will see a motion blur. We are going to enable that. You will see it instantly tick on and I'm going to tick the quality up to about six, which will smooth that out a bit. And then if we preview that animation, you will see that adds a really nice motion blur when these assets start whipping across the screen, which will really sell it. And if we hop back to our edit page, you will see that transition. So we have our transition. Now begins the journey of getting it from DaVinci Resolve to something usable inside OBS. First, we need to export. And for that, we need to jump to the deliver page. Because we are using this for a transition, we need to preserve the transparency of the clip. And in Resolve to do that, you need to select export of individual clips. Then we need to select an export codec that supports transparency. If you're on Mac, you can use ProRes and the main options we have on PC are DNX, HR, and GoPro Cineform. I'm going to use GoPro Cineform, change the type to RGB 12-bit, 
which will enable underneath resolution this export alpha option. I'm going to check that and leave my alpha mode as pre-multiplied. Then I just have to name my clip and select a location for output. I'm going to take that to a desktop on a folder I have made. And then we can add to render queue and render. If we navigate to that destination, you will see that video has exported. Because of those exportings, I had it added these zeros, but I'm just going to wipe that out. Make sure this name is a clean stream wipe. This video file is functional. We could drag it right into OBS and use it, but because of the file format we selected, every time we would want to play this transition, it would unnecessarily tax our system. So we are going to convert it into a much more friendly file format, that being WebM. And to use that, we are going to use the utility called FFM. MPEG. FFmpeg is available for free on their website and I'm going to walk you through how to download that and convert this file. First I want to give a quick shout out to Camera Tim whose recent video all about transparency and resolve and FFmpeg really helped me out. A link to his video in the description. No. So to get going you want to go to ffmpeg.org you will see a main download prompt click that, select your operating system, and then you'll have the download link for that build and you can go ahead and download FFmpeg. And the file will show up in your download folders. You'll just need to extract that. And in that folder inside bin, you will see FFmpeg. I've created a folder just for converting on my desktop and I'm going to drag FFmpeg right into that new folder. And then I'm going to open where I have my stream transition and drag that file into that same convert folder. Okay, this is where it gets a little complicated and we'll move a little quick. Are you watching closely? To use FFmpeg, you need to open the command line. So I'm going to click down in my Windows search bar here, type CMD and open the command prompt. Then I'm going to type CD space. And in this folder I have for converting, I'm going to click in this address bar and drag that name right into my command prompt and click enter, which will direct the command prompt to this folder. And then to convert this file to WebM, I'm going to type the following, ffmpeg space dash i to point to which file I want to import for conversion. Then I'm going to type the name of that file with its file extension, mov space, and because I want to keep the same name, I'm just going to type stream wipe again, but dot web M. And then when you click enter, it will begin to convert that file into the WebM format. And when it's finished, you will see that WebM file in that same folder. And then inside OBS, we can come down to scene transitions, click this plus to add a new stinger. And then when you browse for the video file, you want to go to that folder where that WebM was stored and click open. And if you preview this transition, it'll play back correctly but the scene behind it will change too quickly and that is because of this transition point in milliseconds. We want this transition to happen while the screen is completely covered by the transition. And if you'll remember, our clip is about a second and a half, but we have a decent amount of ease on that. So if we change that to 900 milliseconds, that should work great. <clears throat> All right, I'm back. You don't know why I was away, but I had a bagel. We're not done yet because I'm about to show you something that could make this entire process much easier. In the description is gonna be a download link for a preset that I have made using the exact transition that you just watched me create. This was created using the macro system inside Fusion and if you are interested in that process, you can watch this other video I made which uses the same process to create a template for shaky text. But if you download that preset, you will see this setting file. And to use this inside DaVinci Resolve, you need to drag it to a very specific folder. I will have this exact file path where you need to drag it in the description, but I'm just going to copy this preset and paste it inside of this generators folder. And then if we open resolve back up and go to the effects library generators, fusion generators, we will see that preset up here. I'm here on this timeline where I built that transition previously. This is that fusion composition. But if I grab this preset and drag it onto the timeline next to it and preview that, you will see that it is that exact transition. Now, by default, any preset that you create and drag on your timeline will be five seconds long, but you remember that we only ended up using about a second and a half. So we can scrub to the end of this transition and then just trim this clip back. That in itself could be pretty cool. I just gave you all the work I did. You could export, convert that, and use the exact same transition in your work, but it gets better. If I click on this preset, and navigate over to the inspector, you will see 
all of the color controls for those background nodes. Unfortunately, because of the process where I had to make this preset, these are not actually in any meaningful order. So you'll have to play around, but soon you will see which controls correspond to which background node. So you can hop right in and start changing the colors of all of these background colors. And pretty soon you can get something that looks pretty bad. But this is just to demonstrate the flexibility of what this preset offers. You can use the simple grayscale if you like, but if you have branded colors for your stream, you can plug those right in and your entire design will feel unified. So download the preset, start messing with these colors, and in a matter of minutes, you will have a completely custom stream transition. Thank you so much for watching. If this video was useful, please drop a like. If you end up using this preset, uh, please let me know. I would love to see it on any streams. Leave a comment if you have any questions about editing or DaVinci Resolve or motion graphics. And if you want to stay in the loop with every new tutorial, please consider subscribing. Thanks. I'll see you next time.